Earth looked amazing, no fighting, and nature was sparkling clean. But there was a dark secret. Aliens called souls took over. These space hitchhikers hopped from planet to planet, squeezing themselves into the strongest creatures' bodies. They kicked out the original brain but kept the memories. You could spot a soul by the creepy silver rings in their eyes. A handful of humans refused to be soul snacks. They hid in every nook and cranny, just trying to survive. One such rebel was Melanie. She took refuge in a hotel, but the soul police, called Seekers, sniffed her out. Melanie fought like a cornered cat, landing a few good punches before scrambling to the next floor. In a desperate escape, she leaped out the window, crashing to the ground with a painful thud. The Seekers found her, whisking her to a medical bay. There, they zapped her wounds with a strange spray, healing them in a flash. Then, they shoved a soul parasite into her body. When Melanie woke up, her eyes were different. The soul inside, calling itself Wanderer, introduced itself. For a few peaceful hours, Wanderer chilled out, getting used to its new human suit. But then, a voice whispered in Wanderer's head. Melanie wasn't giving up without a fight. She was battling for control. A seeker named Blondie, the boss around here, summoned Wanderer. Blondie demanded Wanderer dig through Melanie's memories, hoping to find the hidden human base. Wanderer did as she was told, and pictures from Melanie's past flashed by. One memory showed Melanie and her brother Jamie hiding on a dock while the Seekers invaded. Back home, their dad, knowing he'd be taken over, chose to self-delete. A terrible but brave choice. Melanie tried to block Wanderer from revealing this painful memory, but she was still weak. Later that night, another memory surfaced in Wanderer's dreams. This time, Melanie was scavenging for food in a house when a guy named Jared lunged at her, mistaking her for a soul. He quickly realized she was human and, overcome with joy, planted a big kiss on her. Melanie, overwhelmed, shoved him away and bolted. Jared chased after her, proving he wasn't a soul, and begged her to join forces. The memory faded, but Wanderer couldn't shake the feeling of that kiss. She even started drawing a picture of Jared, but Melanie, with a surge of strength, forced her to stop. The next day, Blondie found the unfinished drawing and scolded Wanderer, demanding more information. She learns that Melanie and her brother Jamie eventually found a safe haven with a guy named Jared who lived in the countryside. Melanie and Jared fell in love. This feeling of love confuses Wanderer and Blondie, the boss seeker, reminds her that humans have physical desires that are wrong for souls. The flashbacks continue. One day, Jared spots the Seekers coming and they're forced to flee, hoping to find the rebel group. During their escape, they stop at a hotel. Here, Melanie creates a diversion so Jared and Jamie can escape. Wanderer realizes this is the moment the Seekers captured Melanie. Wanderer says she can't see any more memories and Blondie leaves. However, a specific landscape keeps popping into Wanderer's mind. She starts drawing it, but Melanie, fearing for her loved one's safety, convinces Wanderer to tear the paper into pieces. Over the next few days, Blondie keeps questioning Wanderer, but Wanderer stays silent. Feeling Melanie's love has awakened a protective instinct in her. One afternoon, Blondie reveals they found Jared and he'll be captured soon. Wanderer panics and tries to attack Blondie, but gets subdued and put to sleep. Later, Blondie and a doctor discuss Melanie's strong resistance. They decide to transfer Wanderer to a new, more compliant host. Blondie even suggests taking over Melanie's body herself, just to access the memories and then discard the human shell. Left alone for the night before the procedure, Melanie convinces Wanderer to escape. Melanie teaches Wanderer a clever trick to jam the door with a chair. They then jump off the balcony and land in the pool to avoid immediate pursuit. When a seeker tries to stop them, Melanie guides Wanderer to use the alien spray to put him to sleep. They need a car to escape. Wanderer suggests stealing one, but Melanie reveals that due to their inherent trust, souls can simply ask for a vehicle in an emergency. Back at the facility, Blondie and the doctor discover the escape. They find the torn pieces of Wanderer's drawing in her clothes. During the car chase, Melanie bombards Wanderer with memories of her and Jamie to distract her and steer the car towards the rebel's base. This power struggle leads to a car crash. With no other option, Wanderer allows Melanie to guide her on foot through the desert, carefully avoiding leaving tracks. Back at the Seeker base, Blondie pieces together the torn drawing and finds the location on a fancy map. She speeds off in her sleek car, but reaches the crash site to find nothing but a wrecked car and no footprints. She calls for backup and sets them searching the area. Meanwhile, Wanderer stumbles through the desert with only a tiny bottle of water from the car. 
The relentless sun beats down, and she collapses under a tree, sunburned and weak. A man named Jeb, the rebel leader, finds her. He offers her water, and Wanderer mumbles, You found us. This simple phrase using us makes Jeb suspicious. More rebels arrive, but they're not friendly. Maggie slaps Wanderer, and some guys named Ian and Cal want to kill her for being a soul parasite. Jeb stops them with his gun and blindfolds Wanderer, taking her with them. The group hides in a secret cave high in the mountains. This is their hidden base. Wanderer sees Melanie's loved ones, but Jared punches her right away. Maggie wants their doctor to remove the soul from Wanderer just like they do with others, but Jamie, to everyone's surprise, disagrees. They give Wanderer a room, but Jamie keeps peeking through a hole in the roof to spy on her. Melanie, inside Wanderer's head, begs her not to tell anyone about her voice. They'll think she's crazy. Jared guards Wanderer's room because the others want to kill her. When they try to attack, a fight breaks out between Jared and Kyle. Wanderer rushes out to stop them, but they completely ignore her and keep brawling. Ian grabs Wanderer and starts choking her, but Jeb shows up just in time and fires a warning shot. He declares Wanderer's area off-limits and threatens to shoot anyone who disobeys. Before leaving, Jared asks Jeb to keep Jamie away from Wanderer. Meanwhile, Ian, Jared, and Kyle spot seekers nearby. They search for a while but find no clues, so they give up. Blondie, however, refuses to leave with the others and keeps searching. Back with Wanderer, she finally catches Jamie spying on her. Jeb listens secretly as Wanderer explains she's taken over Melanie's body. The guys burst in, and Jared warns Jamie to stay away from the evil Wanderer. But Ian starts having doubts. After all, souls don't usually risk their lives to save others. Out in the desert, Blondie gets a call. The search team is heading back because they spotted humans in the area. The next morning, Jeb gives Wanderer a new nickname, Wanda, and takes her to wash up in an underground river. Then, he shows her their secret wheat farm, hidden beneath a clever system of mirrors that redirect sunlight through a hole in the roof. Just as they explore, helicopters appear in the sky. Jeb scrambles to get everyone hiding and close the mirrors before the Seekers see their reflection. Jeb gives his gun to Jamie to make him feel safe around Wanderer, but secretly keeps the bullets. Jamie shows Wanderer a cave filled with glowing worms. Melanie decides it's time to tell the truth. Wanderer explains she's still alive inside, and a happy Jamie hugs Wanderer. Meanwhile, a group of rebels leaves in trucks to find supplies. They raid a supermarket and are loading the trucks when a seeker finds them. Jared quickly knocks him out and hides him in the truck before they escape. The next morning, Wanderer helps harvest the wheat. She and Ian keep looking at each other in a friendly way. Maggie refuses to give Wanderer water, but Ian shares his. Wanderer enjoys the attention even though Melanie reminds her he tried to kill her. Suddenly, the sound of helicopters scares Jamie and he accidentally cuts himself with the scythe. Everyone rushes to close the mirrors again to avoid detection. The helicopters fly away but spot one of the trucks speeding. The rebels in the truck shoot at the helicopter and scare it away, but seeker cars start chasing them. The rebels are trapped and decide to crash the truck to avoid capture. In the other truck, Jared and Kyle watch their friends die helplessly. They pretend to be souls so they can keep driving. Blondie notices their hesitation and sends a car after them. Kyle tries to shoot the car, but it doesn't work. Jared stops the truck under a bridge and crashes the seeker car into it. He and Kyle try to kidnap the driver, but Blondie arrives and starts shooting. The guys escape in the truck, and Blondie accidentally shoots and kills the seeker driver. The other seekers yell at Blondie, saying she's lost control and needs to give up the chase. Back in the cave, Wanderer talks about her people. They've taken over 12 planets with intelligent life and always lived peacefully with others. She also reveals she's over a thousand years old. Jared and Kyle return, furious to see Wanderer treated normally. Jeb stops them from shooting, but Ian can't explain that she's not a threat. Jamie finally reveals Melanie is still alive, but Jared refuses to believe him and storms off. Wanderer gets stuck in her room for her own safety. Jared has a dream about hot nights with Melanie and decides to chat with her, but keeps calling her it instead of her name. Ian gives them some privacy and Jared kisses Wanderer. This freaks Melanie out and she forces Wanderer to push him away, just like the first time. Jared thinks this is a good sign and tells Wanderer he loves her. Scared, Wanderer hides by the river. Suddenly, Kyle shows up looking for Wanderer. She dives underwater to hide until he leaves. When she tries to escape through another tunnel, Kyle's waiting for her and attacks. They fight, and Kyle tries to throw Wanderer off a waterfall. But Wanderer punches him 
and he falls in instead. Melanie wants to let him drown, but Wanderer saves him. Ian and Jared arrive and help pull Kyle out. The doctor checks them both over, and Jeb asks what happened. Wanderer lies and says it's an accident. Ian doesn't believe her, but without proof, Kyle gets to stay for now. Jared tells Ian to stay away from Wanderer and leaves with Kyle on a supply run. Later, Ian takes Wanderer outside to enjoy the sunshine and admits he has a crush on her. Wanderer likes him too, but stops him from kissing her because Melanie doesn't want it. Ian kisses her anyway, and Wanderer asks for some time to think. Back at the bad guy base, Blondie watches videos of the area and sees her hand shaking. She won't admit she's losing control and hears a voice in her head whispering. Wanderer notices Jamie's wound isn't healing properly. She confronts the doctor and is horrified to learn they kill captured aliens by taking out their parasite things. This makes Wanderer call them monsters, and she goes to her room crying. Days pass with Wanderer refusing to come out or eat. Jeb convinces her to stay by promising no more prisoners. He also tells her Jamie is really sick because his wound is infected. Worried, Wanderer checks on Jamie and tries to talk to Melanie, but there's no answer. She lies and says Melanie is okay, then rushes to see Ian and asks him to kiss her. This time, Melanie doesn't fight back, and Wanderer realizes she's gone. But Ian doesn't believe it, and asks Jared to kiss Wanderer instead. This wakes Melanie up, and she makes Wanderer bite Jared to stop the kiss. Hearing about Jamie being sick, Melanie agrees they need to take action. Wanderer convinces Jared to take them to the city. Outside the hospital, Jared gets Wanderer hurt with a knife. She uses these fake wounds to get a doctor's appointment. The fancy spray heals her instantly, and while the doctor isn't looking, Wanderer steals a bunch of these sprays. On the way out, she sees a special pod for alien things and takes that too. Someone following them on a motorcycle disappears. Back at the cave, the magical spray heals Jamie completely. Now everyone trusts Wanderer and takes her shopping because her alien eyes let her get food without trouble. When they return, they find a dead guard. It turns out the person following them was Blondie, the bad guy leader. She tries to shoot them, but Jeb shoots her first. They take Blondie to the cave and heal her with the spray, which confuses her a lot. Wanderer learns the other bad guys don't know where she is, so they're safe for now. Wanderer makes a deal with the doctor. She'll teach him how to remove the alien things from people without killing them, but he has to promise to stop killing the aliens. The doctor agrees. Blondie is put to sleep, and the doctor cuts her open. Wanderer shows the humans how to carefully take the alien out by talking nicely to it. They put the little alien in the pod Wanderer stole, and Blondie wakes up as a human again, with her real name being Lacey. Just like Melanie, Lacey was trapped inside her own head, which is why Blondie chased Wanderer, to stop others from suffering like her. A few hours later, they go to the city. Wanderer uses a special machine to send the alien back to space. Back at the cave, Wanderer wants the doctor to take her out of Melanie's body and let her die, but no one agrees because they can save the alien too. Wanderer doesn't listen. Ian tells her he loves her, and she kisses him goodbye. Later, Wanderer wakes up to see Melanie. The group explains they gave her a new body, the body of a girl who was already brain dead. So instead of taking a life, she's actually helping someone live again. Now Wanderer, with her new human name Wanda, can start a new life with Ian. Melanie gets to go back to Jared. Months later, both couples are out in the city when they're stopped by a scary guy. He checks their eyes under sunglasses and sees Wanda's alien eyes. He asks if she's a prisoner, but Wanda says she's friends with humans. This guy smiles. It turns out he's also working with a secret group of humans looking for other survivors, just like them. They invite both couples to join their team. 